All right, guys, check this out. You hear that? That's a mighty powerful blong. So what I got here is a KV27 FS12 that I'm going to be uh, reviewing for you guys. And then over here, I got a KV36 FV15. And we'll review that one at the same time. And at the end, I'm going to compare and contrast the strengths and weaknesses of having a large 36 inch oh, get rid of all this what? I'll be comparing and contrasting the strengths and weaknesses of having a 36 inch versus having a 27 inch Trinitron Wig a flat screen, big ass heavy CRT. And I feel like comparing the, the 36 and the 27s is a, is a really, is a good thing to do because in my opinion, those are the two you want. You know, if you're going for the best of the best, you either want a 27 or a 36. But I'll get into that later. For right now, let's just check out this this FS12 I got in front of me right here, 27 inch. So looking at it, to me it's an ugly set just aesthetically. It's uh, silver, I don't like the silver. And then if we come over here, let me show you guys. like the sides of it it kind of flares out down here at the bottom I don't like that and then like the speakers at the bottom I don't care for I do like the fact that it has the square design um, so design wise you know I don't care for it I do like it more than like a 100 series and the uh, the 36 is is very similar in design it does say Trinitron at the top instead of Wega and um, it's got its buttons let me show you the buttons here it's got its buttons right here on the top I like that and it has like I said it's flat on the top so you can set stuff down on it that's very useful and it is a gorgeous looking set like a uh, gorgeous is in this just the uh, sharpness and the image quality uh, let's get a uh, Let's get a little closer and I can demonstrate that to you guys. All right, as you can see, it has very thick scan lines. The color is very good on it. It's almost as good as a PVM, a low end 600 line PVM. I was surprised. This isn't a TV that I game on. So I don't use it. I don't, for my setup, 27s aren't very useful. I use 36 inches. Um, so pulling it out was a shock. Like it's considerably, I shouldn't say considerably, it is sharper than my, my 36 FV15 that I, I use in my bedroom and I game on. If you pull up the menu here, Let's back up, back up and I'll pull up the menu for you guys. All right, so these are the two types of menus you'll run into on these Wega sets. Uh, I don't know what dictates whether you get the menu on the left versus the right, because I've seen 
FV sets with both menu types and FS sets with both menu types. The FV sets are the higher end sets. They have features like picture in picture and some other stuff that we don't really care about. But it doesn't seem to matter whether it's FS or FV. And the year doesn't seem to matter either. Uh, the set on the right is a 1999. And then the set on the left is a 2000. I, I don't know why they have one menu or the other, but they do make a difference. Like the set on the right, you can see towards the bottom, you can adjust Trinitone and Color Correct. Color, color Correct will, will dim the reds and Trinitone will affect the colors. There's an NTSC setting, which is more green. If you set Trinitone to high, it's more blue. I tend to leave it on medium. So if your CRT is getting old, having some issues or something, you can, you know, the white balance is off. You can kind of use that setting to dial it in. Besides that, this menu is useful and that it has a VM setting on the bottom here. You can see VM and that is an edge enhancement feature. And let me show you what that does. So if we get in really close here, let's bring up a sprite on the screen. I'll show you what that edge enhancement does. Fast forward. Okay, so now we got some sprites on the screen. Here's a good example. We got this foot soldier over here. Okay. So I'm gonna turn turn VM. It's on low now. So now it's on high. Now it's off. It seems to add like a black border around them. Off, high, and low. And I'm divided on whether I like this feature or not. On some games it looks good, some it doesn't. It does seem to add an artificial sharpness. It definitely looks sharper with it on. But it seems to be like an artificial sharpness. Like it's adding a black border that, you know, like a BVM, like this guy over here, he's sharp, but he don't have to add no black border. He just is what he is. This guy needs this funky VM feature. So I'm a little divided on it. Now these sets over here, on their menu, there is no VM setting. However, when you toggle between Vivid, Standard, and Movie, it'll have it seems to have that VM setting enabled um, automatically and you can't turn it on or off. You're just stuck with it on that setting. So I tend to leave these sets on movie mode because they don't have that VM enabled. So let's go around back and I'll, I'll show you the back side of this TV. So it's a KV 27 FS 12 manufactured in 2000. We can see it's got component inputs to composite and S video and an audio out, no video out, and uh, a VHF there, uh, what do you call it, RF. And if we come around to the front, we can see that it does have another input in the front here and for composite and access to the menu. And right here, whoop, you got the, uh, I don't know what to call it. It's, it's what, it senses the remote control. So if you cover that up, the remote won't communicate with it, which is something I've made use of on this TV. I covered it up. Oh. Right there. Hey. That way, I can have these two TVs next to each other and uh, only use the menu on one of them. 
I can wholeheartedly recommend you pick up one of these FS12s or an FV15. These are arguably one of the best consumer grade CRTs ever made. The Trinitone, or excuse me, the Trinitrons just are very sharp compared to other consumer sets. And the colors are very good. I mean, if you get an old set, these are old sets, they're over 20 years old, or they're around 20 years old. So one thing to bear in mind is how faded the tube is. You know, if it's a faded tube, you know, the colors are going the white balance is going to be off and the colors aren't going to be very good. So finding one with low hours is something you want to look for. Another issue with these with these flat screens is geometry. And a lot of people will just avoid these CRTs because they think the geometry is horrible on all of them. Now, I've owned three of these teen series, FS, FV, 12, 13, 15, I've owned three of them, and all of them have had good geometry. I'll pull up a grid pattern and, and demonstrate that after, after I'm done talking here. But I'm inclined to think that these teen series have better geometry than say a 100 series, like an F, say a 27 FV 120. I've owned three, excuse me, I've owned around six or seven of the 100 series uh, Wegas, and all of them have needed some sort of geometry correction. Uh, a couple of them, the geometry was so bad, I just took them to the dump. Two of them were just, I couldn't correct it. It was too distracting. But the rest of them I was able to correct and, and get it better. But even after correcting those 100s, none of them were as good as the three teen series I've had without any correction. Like this TV in particular, I didn't adjust anything on it. I didn't adjust the convergence or the geometry. I did do a color correction, which is something, you know, I did it in the, in the menu, just the user menu, which is something I have to do on every TV. Oh, check this out. It says uh, Splinter's job is Ninja Master. <laughs> Wish that was my job. But um, yeah, what else to say? Uh, I guess I'll just uh, pull up a grid and show you what that looks like. Got a grid pattern pulled up. Looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a dip on the top there, but there's absolutely nothing you're going to see while gaming. You know, the grid pattern fetishist might have a problem with a little bit of bowing on the bottom bottom lines down there, but excellent geometry. And as far as convergence, let's get in here to the nitty gritty and look at the convergence on it. Uh, excellent convergence in the center. There's a little bit off in the corners as to be expected, but still quite good in the corners. Probably nothing you'll notice while gaming. Got the KV36FV15 here. This is the set I'm currently using in my room. And aesthetically, the build on it is okay. It's still silver. I don't like the silver, but I do like the speakers on the side. I do like that it's square and it has the buttons on the top. Oh, let me show you that. So you come up here. I do like these buttons up here on the top. And the fact that you can set stuff on the top of it is nice. On the bottom here, we do have a pull-out door like most of these have with menus. This one actually has, let's see if you can see it in here, it has S-Video in there, which is kind of nice. I've used that for testing because S-Video does look pretty good. I've hooked my PlayStation 2 up to that before. And here, check this out. My wife was helping me move this and she dropped it 
and uh, that piece broke off. I glued it back on. That's one of the issues with moving these is a 36, you kind of need two grown men to carry it. I had my wife help me and bless her heart. She was being a good sport. She did drop it a little bit and it didn't really bother me. I don't care too much about stuff like that. She felt devastated and I kind of let her feel devastated so that I could gain some marital uh, capital there and kind of guilt trip her into helping me out. But don't tell her I told you that. So I'm not going to go around back and show you guys the back of this thing. That's another issue with these big boys is, you know, they're a pain in the butt to move, to do anything. Like earlier I was telling you, like, I don't feel like pulling this out and adjusting the geometry and convergence on it. Cause it's just such a bear to do anything with. Whereas like this 27 here, if this was having geometry or convergence issues, you know, I just grab it with my hands, pick it up, put it on the cart, and fix it. And then one thing that's worth noting, when you adjust convergence issues on these CRTs, there's a neck board and you can, let me dial in the focus here. You go in on the neck board and you turn a screwdriver and you look at the front. So the neck board on them, you know, is on the back of the CRT. So if you got your hand in here on the neck board on a 27, you can come around, like I have my hand on the back right now. I can come around to the front and see what's going on. You know, here's my hand and I can turn a screwdriver and look. But on this 36, you actually need two people. One person has to have their hand back here turning the neck board screwdriver and someone else has to watch in the front because you're just not long enough to to reach around like my hand is like on the neck board right now and I'm just I'm still at the back of the TV so making adjustments like that is a pain so there are some things involved with having one of these big boys um, yeah so I'm not gonna pull the back out on the back of it it uh, it's just like the other the 12 it's got a, com a component input spot it's got Ooh, two composites. I believe this one actually has at least one S video. I don't know if it has two, but uh, it also has a, a, a like an out on it, like a um, a composite video out that the uh, the twelve doesn't have on it. But I've never used it. I don't really care about that. Something to mention is I always use component on these TVs. I uh, recommend anyone looking to pick up a CRT, pick one up with component inputs. If it has component, it's going to have everything else as well. And you can get the best picture quality out of component. So your uh, consoles will output like a Nintendo, a Genesis outputs RGB and you get a transcoder and it'll convert the RGB into component with Virtually no video quality loss if you get a good component converter. So let's see. I think I'll try and show you guys some scan lines here. Give me a okay, second. Okay, so we're in close, checking out the scan lines. So you can also make out the mask of this tube because it's a 36. So you're not meant to be this close up to it. And so on a large CRT like this, you can you see the mask of it because just physically the mask is so large that when you get this close you can you'll see those vertical dark lines like the little pixelated look when you're at a normal viewing distance you won't see those but this tv is not as sharp as the uh the 12 that i was showing earlier and part of that is because this tv is a little bit more worn than the other one the tube isn't as fresh let's pull up the menu and we will mess with different video modes that have different edge enhancements. So you see how that edge enhancement happened there? That's, I believe, the sport setting. It's like turning VM on. There's vivid. Standard, I think, has like VM to low. And then back to movie. So it does look 
sharper with the uh, vivid setting with the edge enhancement VM type of stuff going on. But I tend to game in movie like this and I'll notice that it just looks better while gaming. Maybe not a, a still image, but I prefer the movie mode. Okay, let's uh, back up and just let this thing kind of run. I did notice that the focus might be off a little bit on this set and it's a little more tired. It probably could use a white balance adjustment. I'm curious if I did that, if it would come out a little bit sharper or maybe if the tube was fresher, if it would be as sharp as the 27. Well, I'm starting to wonder are just 27s sharper in general than the 36. Now that I say that, I know it's not true because I have this XBR over here that's a 36. It's actually 37 inches. And that XBR is just as sharp as, say, this 27, if not more. So I'm inclined to think that sharpness, you know, isn't you're not going to get a sharper tube just by getting a smaller one. Got a grid on the 36 FV 15 over here. Very good geometry. Again, a little dip on the top left there. Yeah, it doesn't need any tilt. Tilt is good on it. There's a little bit of bowing on the bottom there. Nothing you'll notice while gaming. Uh, let's check out the convergence. We'll come in closer here. Okay, let's get the focus on. Uh, let's see. There's a little red on the bottom there, maybe a little bit. Looking at it now, the convergence actually looks pretty good. It looks like I might need to actually make a focus adjustment on the flyback of this set. This TV does have an issue on the top here. The convergence is off up here. See, this is what I'm talking about when I say the convergence is worth adjusting. Like. It probably would behoove me to get in there. You can see like distinctly the blue and the red is off in the corner here. You know, if I get off my, my lazy butt and pick this behemoth up and open it up, I probably could improve that and that, that would be worth doing. So I wanted to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of a 27 versus a 36 flat screen Sony CRT. I like the 36s, um, primarily because I like gaming from my bed. That's where I'm gaming right now. I watch movies on it. Movies are always better on a large screen. I mean, that's why we go to the theaters, right, guys? And I think games are better on a large screen, too, if you have the choice. And the 36 has that wow factor. I don't know what to call it, but we all know what I'm talking about. You know, when you go play a light gun game on a projector screen or you go to the big screen you know uh, IMAX theater like that big screen feeling you can get you know these are the biggest CRTs you can get are like the 36's for the most part so that's why I go for the big ones and you know you can sit across the room and game on it whereas like this 27 you really need to sit right in front of it not right in front of it but you know you need like a chair in front of like an entertainment center like that and you would just put it in there and, and sit right in front of it that's how you would game on a 27 and one thing about the 27s is they're kind of the entry level big screen they're the smallest you can get and still get that wow factor that spectacle kind of feeling you get that if you sit right in front of that 27 you feel like you're gaming on a big screen like that 20 inch over there no matter how close you get to it that BVM, it's still, it feels cozy, but it, you're not going to get that wow factor. It's just not going to happen. It's a small screen, you know. So you got to kind of think about your space where you're going to put one of these. 
for me, the 32s are useless because you need two people to lift a 32 and you need two people to lift a 36. So why not just get a 36 because it's bigger? So unless you had like an entertainment center or something that just happened to fit your 32 or you had just the space for a 32, I just recommend getting a 36 if you want to go big. Uh, the 27, you can lift, a grown man can lift a 27 inch on his own. I can pick it up off the ground, do whatever I need to do on it. You know, these, that's kind of, these are the sweet spot for that. These are the biggest you can get and still there, you can still like store them under something easily. You can pick them up, you can adjust things on them. When you get into 32 inches, everything you do on it is an ordeal, moving it, adjusting it. It's just, it's heavy. It's huge. Storing it. What else is there to say? You know, like I was saying earlier, I don't think you're going to get better geometry or sharpness out of a 27 versus a 36. It's just a crapshoot. You just got to go pick that CRT up and hope for the best. I think the 27 is going to be the sweet spot for a lot of people it's the biggest you can get before it gets like ridiculous like before you know you can't lift it on your own and where the hell am I gonna store this thing and you know you worry about hurting yourself moving it your wife's gonna friggin drop it and you got a guilt tripper like you don't got to worry about none of that with the 27 and you still get that wow factor but you know if you're like me and you're, you're chasing perfection it's like I want the biggest damn CRT I can get and that's these 36 big boys. I mean, I have a 40 inch, but uh, it's a Mitsubishi and I just, I want a Trinitron. I like the looks of the Trinitrons over anything else without, you know, any CRT really. But, you know, what, whatever you're gaming on, you know, BVM, 14 inch, composite, whatever, like, you know, everybody's got their own preferences. I hope maybe you got something out of this video. Maybe it can help you pick out a CRT or think about, you know, what you want and what works for your setup. And uh, get out there and beat some hard games for me, guys.